Yesterday, myself and our chairman of the youth, Council, uh, youth uh, front of the United National Party filed a petition challenging the legality of the government's proposed goods and services tax bill. It is as members of the youth and as members of the United National Party, we are concerned that this bill is going to set the stage for not only wide-scale corruption in the future, but will also remove all checks and balances over public finance in the country. Now, historically, it has been the responsibility of Parliament to ensure that public fi finances, including the imposition of taxation, is done in a transparent manner. However, according to this bill, which, is being present, which has been brought into Parliament and trying to be rushed through the legislative process, the Minister will now be the sole decision maker in regards to the rate and the method of which taxes calculated in regards to the GST and the industries that it is being imposed upon. This means that with no oversight of Parliament, and remember Parliament is made up of the representatives of the citizens of Sri Lanka, there will be no oversight by Parliament, the Minister and the Minister alone will decide on the rate of taxation that will be enforced on the public. At a time where the citizens of Sri Lanka are facing much hardship, the government is taking it upon themselves to further financially burden ourselves with no means of redress. Now not only does this remove any forms of transparency in regards to public finances, but it is also setting the stage for manipulation of government revenue. In 2020, we saw one of the largest financial frauds committed by the state in the sugar scam. At the time, tax rate on the, imp on the import of sugar was reduced to ensure that an individual was allowed to import sugar at a lower cost than his competitors. The loss of state revenue at the time has been calculated anywhere between rupees 10 billion and 15 billion, which is a huge loss to the government. Now, if the GST bill is enacted in its current form, this government will have successfully laid the foundation for further such sugar scams. It's according to this bill, it will be the minister who is empowered to decide on the tax structure of the goods and services in the industries of telecommunications, liquor, and vehicles. Now, not only are we going to allow for further financial scams to take place, but we are also effectively creating the opportunity for the minister to create a monopoly within those industries. As the minister and the minister alone decides on the tax rate for those industries, he will be able to decide whether tax is increased or decreased, which will benefit his supporters and himself in regards to that industry. The government has brought, is bringing the country onto the verge of financial bankruptcy. But if this bill is passed in its current form, the government itself has crossed over to moral bankruptcy. So we're urging the government immediately withdraw this bill. The manner in which this bill has been drafted has demonstrated that the cabinet of ministers does not have the, are not concerned about solving the economic crisis that's in, unfolding in the country. If the government deemed it necessary to raise revenue for the state, then why have they decided to bypass the existing procedure and introduce a new procedure? Currently, any revenue that is earned by the government, that includes what is earned through taxes, is deposited into the consolidated fund. Now, the consolidated fund comes under the purview of parliament, and it is parliament who decides how that, those funds are dispersed. If this bill is enacted, any money that is raised from the GST will not go into the consolidated fund, but instead it will go into a separate bank account that is controlled by the minister. That means there is no overview on what is happening with that money. Taxes, which you and myself are paying, are used for the development and the maintenance of the country. However, any money that is earned through GST can be used for whatever the minister deems necessary, which means that there is absolutely no accountability for public funds. Now, as I mentioned earlier, we are already facing huge financial constraints in the country. Cost of living is increasing. We're facing fuel shortages, food shortages. There's a foreign exchange crisis. Now the country, by rushing through this uh, bill, the government is running the risk of introducing double taxation on the citizens of the country. Originally, we, in Sri Lanka, we currently have the VAT, which is imposed on the goods and services of the, in the country. However, if this GST is imposed, we are uncertain as to what components of goods and services it's going to be charged on, which means that we are possibly, as citizens, going to be paying double taxation in VAT and GST. In other countries, such as India, before they introduced GST, they abolished the VAT. We want to ask the government and the cabinet of ministers, are you all going to be abolishing the VAT prior to introducing the GST? If not, are you all admitting that there will be double taxation? These are questions that have been raised due to the poor planning and drafting of this bill. Now, for several months, the United National Party has been urging this government to go to the IMF 
and seek its assistance in the financial restructuring of the current pro economy. The government has been hedging this. On one hand, we have the central bank governor who claims that the government in no, in no certain terms are going to seek the support of the IMF. On the other hand, we have cabinet spokespeople saying that they still have not taken a decision in regards to the IMF. Now, bills such as this raise the question as to whether or not the government is choosing to avoid going to the IMF so that they can pass such legislation which will only serve to further, um, uh, to further enrich certain segments of society while passing the financial burdens onto the public. So we, as the youth of the United National Party, are urging the government immediately withdraw this bill, return to the drawing board, and seek out the assistance of professionals. If the government is not willing to go to the IMF, then that is fine, but they must immediately present the alternative, because currently the government's plans have failed. Thank you.